how are you doing today we are going to start with our java development session my name is arun aras chandran i am founder of neonic software solutions private limited in today's session we are going to cover about how we can set up a java development environment using jdk i'll be showing where you can download jdk how you are going to set up jdk and how we are writing a java program and running it using the command prompt in this session we are going to use a windows machine and we are going to use google chrome browser and we'll be using jdk 14 to set up our development environment To work with Java, we need to have Java Development Environment or JDK installed in our Windows machine. How we verify that? We can verify by checking it in the command prompt. In Windows, you go to command prompt and type Java minus version. If Java installed in this machine, it should display the JDK version. In my command, when I run, you can see the command is not recognized because Java is not installed in this machine. Now we can open our Google Chrome and type jdk.java.net. In this website, we can download our required JDK. In this case, I am going to download JDK 14. If you want to download any other JDK versions, you can see from the screen and you can download the required one which you want to develop on. I'm taking the latest JDK 14, which is going to give me a zip file. The zip file is for Windows. I'm going to download the Windows zip file. I have downloaded my JDK. I can see that in my downloads directory. We can extract this jdk zip file into a directory and let us try to set up java open the c drive program files and going inside a folder named java this folder has created when i installed jdk 8 in my earlier days now i'm going to extract the JDK which newly I downloaded into this same directory. Let's extract this. Now you need to give an admin privilege to continue the copy it into the C drive. Now we can see the directory successfully extracted. Let's close the zip file. The next thing we need to do is we need to configure the environment variables. That means we need to add this Java command into the class path. For that, open the search bar in Windows and then search for environment variables. Click environment variables. Open the system variables. Let's edit the path. In this path, we don't see a JDK bin directory. Let us add our JDK bin directory to the path variables. Click new variable name. We'll type in full caps Java underscore home. Go to the JDK directory, copy the full path and paste it as the variable value. Next, we need to add this Java home bin directory to the path variables. Here, you need to add new Java home. Remember, in between the percentage symbols and add a slash and bin. Now, your JDK is part of the system variables path. We can verify this by opening back our command prompt and type java minus version let's see it is going to display our open jdk version the version is coming that means we have successfully installed java into this windows machine 
it's time to start our coding let us start writing our first java program which is a hello world program go to desktop right click create a new folder to start with our programs open the newly created directory and let us create a new file new text file a text document and rename it with the extension hello world dot java listen to the extension which i am providing i am changing the extension to java and this alert will be popping up you can give s yes. open the file in notepad plus plus and let us start writing our code class we need to give a class name how we choose the class name is we need to give the exact file name as the class name here in our case hello world is our class name and open the braces and close the braces remember the class name is case sensitive now we will write a method public static void main inside the main method we will be receiving a string array of arguments we will be learning more about this in our upcoming sessions open and close the method braces let us write a command to print a hello world into the console for that we need to type system dot out dot print ln inside the round brackets we need to give double quotes hello world which is a string hello world is a string we are going to print it into the console we are done writing our hello world program now it's time to run and see the output of what we have done for that let us go to the directory and we need to open this path in the command prompt how we are going to do that is we need to copy the path and then open the command prompt copy the path open the command prompt type cd and right click we got the copied path and then enter now we are in the directory where our hello world program is available now we need to compile and run the program type java c the space and hello world dot java and then enter if there is any error syntax error or any mistake we made it will display in the console now when i entered the program compiled successfully and i didn't get any error that means i don't have any syntax errors now my program got compiled before we run the program let us see what happened when we compile now we go back to the directory we can see one more file got created after the compilation named hello world.class this is nothing but java's byte code if you open this in a notepad plus plus you will be able to see some unreadable code when we compiled hello world.java file it has compiled and generated the byte code out of the hello world java named hello world.class now open back our command prompt and run the program using the command java and hello world we should not give the full name just give java and hello world click enter you will be seeing hello world printed in the console now you might be wondering which file whether the java file or the dot class file is executing let us check it and confirm whether the class file or java file is running let's do a simple experiment let's first rename the hello world dot class to hello world one dot class and try to run the java program using the java hello world now you got an error message you didn't get the hello world printed on the screen that clearly shows if the hello world dot class file is not there it is not going to run now rename it back to hello world dot class and then let us try to run this using the command now it printed that shows the hello world 
class is the file which is actually executable. We could still doubt whether the Java file is required to run the program. Let us do another experiment by creating a new folder into the desktop. Now copy the class file into this directory and let us open the command prompt and move to this directory by typing cd and the directory name. Now I am in the test directory. Let us try to run java hello world where we don't have a java file here we just have the bytecode which is the class file. Now you could see the hello world printed on the screen. That means only the hello world dot class file can run anywhere. To run this bytecode we only need to have a jvm installed. Now let us switch back to the original directory where we had our source code and let us try to run the java command. I am running java hello world. Now what happens is without the bytecode it cannot run. With all that experiments we have done it is proved that the bytecode is the one which is executable and which is running in a JVM environment. When I compile the hello world.java again, I will get the bytecode regenerated and this will be allowing me to run my program and I can see my hello world printed on my console. Now let us add one more print statement into the source code. I am typing system.out.println Neonix Academy Java training starts here. Switch back to command prompt and compile using Java C hello world. Now we got the bytecode. Now run Java hello world. We can see the Neonix Academy Java training starts here printed on the console. Now let's do a walkthrough on what we have done so far. First we created a file named hello world.java and we created a class inside that file with the same name of that file. Inside the class we created a method public static main which is receiving a string of arguments. The method name is main and we use the keywords public static void. We will learn about the keywords in the later sessions. The main method receives a string array of arguments. Even there is no arguments we have to write this string array of arguments. Now we wrote some statements inside the method body. We have to end each statement with a semicolon. Method should have opening braces and closing braces which you can see the highlighted and class also should have an opening brace and closing brace. And a class is declared using the keyword class. Also listen to the syntax of the braces, the opening braces and closing braces. We write methods inside the class body. We use public access specifier here for the main method. The reason because the main is the entry point for a program to run. So we need to make that as a public access specifier otherwise it cannot run. And we use static. We will learn about the static keyword in the upcoming sessions. And this method doesn't return anything. So we have mentioned the return type as void. Also we added two print statements inside our method body for printing a hello world and printing a string neonix academy java training starts here. What we have done so far is we created a hello world java program. We created a class. We wrote method inside it. We can have multiple methods inside a class. We will be learning that things in the upcoming sessions. Hope all of you enjoyed 
the first session in Java. Now you know how to write a Java program. Write a Java program, run it, take a screenshot and post it in the comment section. We will be happy to see your outputs. Thank you.